the name, we exalt the name. Oh, we exalt the name, we exalt the name. You are our sustainer, you are our sustain, our sustainer. that he wants to do something in this place in this moment he wants to move on some hearts right now he wants to mend some brokenness right now in this place I feel the arms of the father just stretched out wide in this place in this room Jesus what would we be without you we're so lost without you So lost without you, so lost without you.
you are worthy of our praise. Let's just make that a declaration as a body in this place. I just feel that. Oh, you alone are worthy of all praise. There's just something about when we all come together and just lift our voice. Oh, you alone worthy of all praise. I just felt such unity in that moment. I just felt the Spirit of God just bringing His body together, just making a declaration. There's something about when we come into His presence and there's unity. I just feel that in in this place today. time together. Oh, like you and no one. Just cry out to him. Oh, there will be Tell him how worthy. Somebody magnify him. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And then after you've done all that, the word says, make melody in your heart. Write your own song to the Lord. Sing your own song in his presence. Just make melody in your heart to the Lord. Just let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let Him feed you. Your life is to be one continuous doxology. One continuous praise. It means to speak well of. See, the Word says if you confess Him before men, He'll confess you before the Father. But if you never come and offer Him a sacrifice of praise, I wonder what position that puts you in. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. See, the enemy would like to keep us all dysfunctional. The the reason there needs to be unity in the body is so that the enemy doesn't come in like a thief and steal the joy of your salvation from you. And if your countenance is any indication of how joyous you are, (laughs) 
Hello. Hello, somebody. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, you must be unified. Why do we do this here? So that when you're out there in the world but not of the world, what do you do? You can't call the preacher to come pump you up. You can't call somebody else to impart your joy. Does anybody know why David had to learn the art of encouragement? He had to learn to encourage himself in the Lord. When the enemy was coming against him, he had to encourage himself in the Lord. When Saul was after him, he had to learn to encourage himself in the Lord. When he was down and out, he had to encourage himself in the Lord. You know why? Because there wasn't nobody else there to do it. What are you saying, Pastor? There ain't nobody else going to do your praising for you. And I've made up in my mind, I ain't going to let no rock out praise me. He said, if you won't praise me, I'll raise up rocks to cry out praise unto me. Somewhere God's going to get praise from somebody or something. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm not saying what I'm saying to you to evoke an emotional response. What needs to come out of your heart is the sincere purity of your praise and worship, not because you're responding to the exhortation of the preacher. Okay? I'm not into emotional hype. Okay? I'm into sincere praise that's so heartfelt it comes out of the wellspring of your soul. What are you saying, Pastor? That you're so grateful to God for His blessing, for His anointing, for His provision, for His watch care over your life that you can't help. You just erupt like a volcanic explosion out of the innermost depths and resources of your spirit. You just explode with... Oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm talking to the right bunch this morning. But I'm telling you, that's why the Holy Spirit has led you into this vein of worship. He led you here. He led you to a place and invited you to come in to His presence. Oh, my God. That thought alone right there ought to blow your mind that the Creator of the universe, the King of kings and Lord of lords, would reach down at Sunrise Church on a March Sunday and invite you to come into the Holy of Holies, into the throne room of grace, there to find help in your time of need. I'm telling you, there ain't nobody can do you like Jesus. There ain't nobody can touch you like Him. There's nothing like His presence. Oh, bless His name. He's invited you. You have an invitation. The tragedy is not everybody will accept the invitation. Some people are just going to stay. Well, I've come as far as I can go, Lord. I'm on just. I'm just going to stay here and be satisfied in the outer court. When He's invited you, oh my God! When Jesus said it's finished. One of the last cries from the cross. And the veil went. And exposed the Holy of Holies. That said, you don't have to have a high priest to pray for you anymore. You are a chosen generation. You are a holy nation. You are a royal priesthood. Called out of darkness into light. For what purpose? To show forth His praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God feels like praise is so important that around the throne He's got angels that do nothing but offer praise and exaltation 24-7 continuously around the throne. You alone are worthy of all, all praise. All praise. All praise. You alone are worthy no one, no one, no one, no one beside you, you alone, you alone, worthy of all praise, all praise, 
yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, I am a child. You alone are worthy of all praise. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we need to be unified this morning. Thank you for the unifying presence of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the unifying presence of praise. Unifies the body. I declare Jesus has all authority in this place. I declare that every distraction, every demonic distraction of the enemy bows at the feet of Jesus. Every foul hindering spirit, every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of sickness and disease, every spirit that would rob a soul of their salvation and their freedom in Christ bows at the feet of Jesus. The Word of God declares that every knee will bow because God has highly exalted Him and given Him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus... Come on, can anybody say the name of Jesus with me? Can you just let, would you just let His name roll off your lips? Jesus. Jesus. At that name, every knee bows in heaven and in earth. Every tongue confesses that He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. So I declare liberty in this place. I proclaim freedom in this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I understand why we need unity because people coming to grips with stuff they need to confront in their lives isn't always easy. It's not always easy. It's easy in the Spirit. It's easy in the Holy Ghost because it's already a done deal, but the flesh wants to argue with the Spirit. How many understand that? The flesh wants to argue and try to come up with reasons and rationales and excuses why it doesn't want to obey the Spirit. Right? Hello, your preacher's trying to instruct you here. The Spirit's always willing. The weakness is with your flesh. Your flesh will just lead you into a world of hurt every time. Oh, but if you ever get over in the Spirit, once you've tasted freedom, once you've tasted how good freedom feels, I mean when you really get free from your flesh, you'll never want to go back to bondage again. Why would you want to live in bondage? Oh my God. When Jesus has made you free. Hallelujah. Somebody put a hallelujah and a praise the Lord with your hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just drive the devil crazy. Just drive the devil crazy this morning. I just feel like driving him crazy. I feel like making a big deal out of the presence of the Lord this morning. It's a big deal when he shows up in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stop this getting up here, going through the motions, acting like we're all spiritual. Okay? 
God didn't call us to come in here and go through the motions of worship. He said, come before me with a sincere heart. A pure heart of praise and worship. He's the yes. You are the amen. Well, I heard two amens. Let's try it again, class. Let's try it again, class. He is the yes. You are the amen. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, anybody know what amen means? What? Amen. So be it. Amen. Let it happen, Lord, and let it happen in me. Yes. How about that? The promises of God are yes and amen. in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Right? That's why He's worthy of praise. You alone are worthy of all praise. When I think about Him, the first thing that comes to mind is He's worthy of praise. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He picked me up, how He turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. When I think about the Lord, how He healed me, how He filled me to the uttermost, makes me want to shout hallelujah. Makes me want to shout hallelujah. Makes me want to shout. It makes me want to shout. Just thinking about Him. Just thinking about Him. Just the thought of Him. Makes me want to shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Just thinking about it? Well, let's see. Let's think about the alternative. I could be dead. I could be lost. I could be homeless. I could be helpless. I could be down and out. But he picked me up. And he turned me around. And He healed me. And He provided for me. I got to let the praise team go. Their corns are hurting their feet. The Lord healed their corns and their bunions. And all that other stuff. Bless you, praise team. Bless you. Y'all can be seated. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm thinking about you, Lord. What? You going? Okay. Make sure if you haven't signed in, sign in this morning. Make sure you sign in. And we have you do this for a purpose so that you can, uh, we can have a record of your of your attendance today it lets us know how many folk were here. It lets us know how many guests we had. I walked in this morning and I got greeted and said, Welcome, welcome to the world's most friendly church. Welcome to the world's most loving church. That's right. I've discovered not everybody wants to be loved, but we're going to love about people anyway. Some people, it's hard for them to love themselves. But that's why we introduce them to Jesus. So they can, they can love themselves and love who they are. So when you sign in here, it just gives us an opportunity to, to serve you. Okay? If you're our, our guest today, we can We'll serve you better, and uh, we'll um, we'll be able to touch base with you, contact you. You don't have to join the church today. Not on your first day, but by the second time. And I just segued into if you desire to. Be Church and want to check out 
what we're who we are and what we're all about than um, see Dionette. I don't know where her, I guess they're all still the spirit of the spirit of the Lord caught them up. Uh, they're not in there gossiping. I just what who Holy Ghost hollering? They're in there hollering, shouting unto God with the voice of triumph. My Lord. Who, who would have thought it? That spirit of good good time in the presence of Jesus is all over me this morning. So y'all just indulge your preacher this morning. Okay? But fill this out. And uh, Dave and Debbie will hand it in. Any first time guests with us this morning? Any first time? First time? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you here today. Bless you. Did they, over here, here's a first time guest. Yeah, Mike, Mike, did you bring this first time guest? My Lord, look out, look out, look out. You'll, you'll start, you'll, y'all, y'all start acting like disciples around here. Out there fishing for men, bringing them in. Just go ahead and fill that out. Praise the Lord. It'll be good. We're getting you in the database. Um, all the youngins that are going to Children's Church, Aubrey's at the back door, so some of you already slid out that way. Okay? Brendan, you can't go. You're too old. But if you want to go, Aubrey, Aubrey's got some Holy Ghost stuff ready for you today. We just, for, for just to give you an update of the week, we just wrapped up Revival. Now, can you believe it? I, I had some people, it, it got back to me because nothing happens here that I don't know about. If you say it, it'll get back to me. You say it, it'll get back to me. Boy, did we have a week. Did we have a week. Some, and, 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 and here's the deal, I can't believe this, that some people said, I didn't even know a thing about it. What does that say about where you've been? So, hello. That you you are attending a new church. This is a new group. This is not a consumer church. This is a serving church. That's what we learned last week. We have moved from the arena of consuming to trying to serve as best we can. Now, we may not do it according to everybody's own personal taste, the way they think. You know, but we're going to try to do it according to the way Scripture because with serving comes accountability. With serving comes responsibility. Okay? And uh, Brandon uh, Levi Spiker, a little Jewish boy, um, brought us a word. Yeah. Yeah, here's even something. Wednesday night we went uh, and had a bite to eat. He and I just uh, started talking about uh, uh, Israel. Started talking about the Holy Land. Something you can pray about. I'll just give you a little tidbit. You can pray about this. Um, we're, we're thinking about putting a sunrise uh, Israel tour together. And, and uh, we'd like to take maybe not more than 15 or 20. A lot of these tours that go over, they've got three, four, five, six hundred. You know how tough it is to move three to six hundred people around on a tour bus? You're only going to be able to get to see so many places. But he was talking to me because he's Jewish and he knows people over there. Um, and he can get into places that other people can't get into, especially the tours. They just won't let him in. Uh, he said, you know, if you want to go to the Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights and see people shooting at each other, I can get you in there. You can see them throwing rocks and they'll have their, their, uh, their AK-47s and all that stuff. But he said, uh, if you don't want to do that, we can go to the Garden Tomb. We can go to Gethsemane. We can go to the Sea of Galilee. We can go to the Dead Sea. We can go to Mount Moriah. Uh, we can go to the Temple Mount. We can just be all over the place. He said, we'll get to see about triple what a tour would get to see. So be, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. 
um, he, he being Jewish, you know, would go to the Wailing Wall. Yeah. Be baptized in that old stinky Jordan River. Some of you will get you out there and do a naming on you and let you dip seven times. Get that old spiritual leprosy off of you. Okay. Remember, remember Brandon preached on that? Jordan stinks. It's muddy. But if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for you. Yeah, we'll get you out there and baptize you in the Jordan. So be praying about that because we're seriously considering that. I've always, I'm telling you, everybody that's ever gone, when they come back, especially my close friends and colleagues in ministry, they say, Pastor, the Bible comes alive. When you go there and actually see it, it just, it just comes alive to you in ways you never dreamt possible. So uh, be, be, uh, be praying about that. We'll, uh, we'll get us an airline ticket and fly over there. We may even stay in the homes of some Jewish people. Eat Jewish cuisine. Be fun. Be good. Yes, brother, I see that hand. Did you need salvation? What was that? Okay. You weren't greeting? We need a church where greeters greet. Ushers ush. Deacons deep. You were in class? You were learning? You were being discipled? Okay. I'll let it go this time, but don't let it happen again. Okay? Okay. Love you. I'm just not used to people apologizing to me in a worship setting. But I, will, I receive it. I accept it. Apology accepted. He was apologizing to the body. He was supposed to be a greeter this morning. He wasn't in his place. Now, if he can do that, let that be a lesson to you. When you've got an assignment to serve and you're not there, just come and apologize. Okay? Okay? Is that all right? That's good. That's good because we're we're here to serve. We're here to serve. Where Where are my ushers this morning? We have ushers. The ushers usher. I don't want you to usher right now. I want you to do something else. Where are you? Get up. Come running. Get these prayer request cards out. Divide them up. Get them out quick. While they're doing that, let me tell you that the end result of our revival... The end result is that we, in, in light of us deciding we're going to be a serving church, we're going to do something about it. For those of you who are listening, for those of you who are listening, say, uh, say, say it with me so I'll know I've got your attention. And you can look up from your iPad, your Kindle, or your iPhone. Say, I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening. Tonight, let me say it quickly while I've still got your attention because you'll lose focus in about 30 seconds. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll be here in the sanctuary. Um, we're strategizing for growth. God has a plan for serving this community and how we're going to serve Brandon and Tara will be with us, kind of laying out infrastructure. And then we've prepared a packet of information that the Holy Spirit's given us. And various ones of you who have gotten all of a sudden creativity is just flourishing around here. And you've gotten creative with your thoughts and ideas. And, and uh, you've sent them to us via email. And so we've, we've put all this together in the hopper. And we're going to be strategizing and planning and just seeing where the Holy Ghost takes us for those that want to serve. Um, and, you know, if, if you don't at this point, that's okay too. We'll, we're going to still love everybody. We're going, we're going to love everybody. But we've made a determination here that we're going to evangelize this community. We're going after souls, and, and we're, going to, we're going to serve in the body of Christ where we can serve and where, where folks will serve. And everybody's going to be accountable. I want to state clearly last week's series of meetings while we talked a lot about works and about the doing 
uh, the balance is that you've got to have you've got to have faith, you've got to have spirit along with the work. So um, anybody that's assigned a position here will have will be in ETS training. Uh, you you got to have spirit. If you're not feeding your spirit, man, and you're not maturing, you, you'll you'll burn out in the work. You, you won't make it through. So we've got to have everybody that that. And if so, if you want to be involved in that, uh, and be involved in your your church uh, growing and ministering effectively tonight, six o'clock. We'll we'll probably spend uh, not not more than a couple hours. We'll be through by eight o'clock and. And uh, be out of here. That way you can go buy steak and shake and get you a steak and a shake and have some fellowship. The night will still be young and you can enjoy uh, the presence of the Lord uh, with one another tonight in here. Everybody got it? What time? Six. Six. Okay. All right. 25, 30, 35 of you. We averaged about 35 of you that, that were able to make it with us. That's good. Prayer request out? Everybody got prayer requests? Okay. All right. You read your request? Let your requests be made known before the Lord so that the body can pray over those. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let you sit this morning, okay? Hallelujah. I didn't get one. You have two? Very good. Very good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Y'all ready? You've read your request? Now make it known before the Lord this morning. Father, we lift these requests before you today as the body of Christ. We believe that the prayer of righteous people is effective and it avails much. And so we're believing you today for the miraculous. We're believing you for the impossible. What is impossible with man is possible with God. We thank you for the salvation of souls. We thank you for the restoration of relationships. We thank you for divine favor. We thank you for the blessing of the Lord that accompanies the righteous. For you will withhold no good thing from them who walk uprightly before you. And so we're declaring today that as we trust you, that you will be faithful to the promise. You will be faithful to that that we are committing to you in faith, And we are putting the amen with it because we seal it by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit because we give voice to your word in the earth. And I thank you today that as we've given voice to your word, you watch over your word to perform it. You will bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. Let it happen that the kingdom of God may be advanced and Jesus Christ may be glorified throughout the earth, in this region, especially where the body of Christ is praying and believing. The prayer of the righteous will not return void. It will accomplish where it is being sent. In Jesus' name, let God's people say praise the Lord. Lord. Now pass it to somebody else. If you've got a pen, put a check on it that you've prayed over it. Pass that need to somebody else. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to be asking specifically in these requests when you pray. Let's pray together. Father, I take authority over immune deficiency. I declare today that immune deficiency will be healed. Pray for a strong immune system that 
It's able to ward off infections and diseases and sickness. I thank you, Lord, that those issues are healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you that family relationships with parents and sons and daughters and vice versa are going to be healed. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray that men, our men, will lay down their lives for their wives and their children, that they will be kingdom men. I decree that they will be kingdom men of God, and they will stand up and take rightful ownership in the rightful place. I declare that there are kingdom women in this body who are standing up and taking their rightful place of authority, even those who find themselves in a place of singleness because divorce has touched their lives or because they are widowed, God, you said you would make up the difference. You would be a husband and a father and that you would be there as provider. You would be there, Lord, to, to protect and to defend and to uphold so that nothing would come nigh their dwelling in the area of discouragement or lack, but everything that they have need of Every, everything, 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 everything that is needed is provided. Everything that is needed is provided. I'm declaring your word now. I release the prophetic anointing to bring it to pass. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, we declare every need taken care of, every need met, every situation, you've accomplished it by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Come on, don't let me do all the praying this morning. I sure would love to have, hear some voices being lifted up. This, you've got to give voice to his word. Don't listen to me pray. You've got to pray. Okay. When you go to the Lord in prayer, you've got to pray. Amen. Amen. You've got to release the word. You've got to speak up. Stand up and speak up and declare the word of the living God today. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Bless God. Now give him some praise for it today. Somebody praise him. Praise him with your clapping. Praise Him with your clapping. Hallelujah. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the miraculous. Thank you for provision. Amen. Hallelujah. Ushers are going to take up the requests and put them back in the... Take them up. Pass them to your left. So they can get them all over on one side. Just pass them down left or right, whichever one you're closest to. And they'll come get them. They're doing that real quick. While they're doing that, get out your tithes and offering. You've already prepared it and brought it with you. I want to commend those of you in the revival meetings this week that you did well, took care of the man of God and his wife. So the Lord's favor and the Lord's blessing is upon you. Thank, thank you for being obedient to the voice of the Lord. We dealt with a lot of things this week, and we dealt with some things in the Spirit. And, uh, I'm going to instruct you right now about money. Don't let money ever become an issue with you, okay? So where that you covet or you get greedy, in other words, you want what somebody else has you're not willing to exercise the discipline to get there. Okay? 
you're not willing to exercise the discipline to get where God wants you to be and to hear, hear from God. And you're all the time suffering lack. There's a reason why you suffer lack. Because you're not obeying God. If you'll obey Him, He said when you obey Him, never seen the righteous forsaken of their seed begging bread. Never seen them. Never seen them. God doesn't want His people out here having to beg. He said, you should be the lender, not the borrower. You should be the head and not the tail. You should be above and not beneath. And if all of those things, the other in the, in the arena of lack describes you, then you need to look inside of you and say, God, what have I missed? Because your word says that I should be provided for. Now, why am I missing this? Okay? And he may say something like this, because you don't know how to steward or manage the resources that I put in your hand. You squander it on other things. Ah. You do not honor me with the first fruits of all your increase. So therefore, I cannot bless you because you have stayed or stopped my hand of blessing because your lack of obedience. Ah. Hello, somebody. Don't get quiet on me now just because I'm preaching good. Well, why are you saying that, Pastor? To embarrass me? No, so you can be blessed. I would prefer you bless. I would prefer you have favor upon your life. But if you're doing things that stop in the hand of God from blessing you, see, God just doesn't throw out blessing carte blanche to disobedient people. He just doesn't do that. But we think, you know, I've never been to a funeral where everybody, you know, the guy or lady in the box, they were, oh, they're in heaven. We just... When it comes to the end of this life, everybody wants to go to heaven, but everybody ain't living the way that's going to get them there. Hello, somebody. So when you come up to the gate, the question will be asked, why should I let you into my heaven? Because it's His heaven. He's prepared it for you. Okay? Some folks are living the way they're living, disobeying God. This is the only, this life is the only heaven they'll ever know. Because if they haven't received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior when they live, leave this life, it's going to be hell from there on out. Hell. And it's eternity. It's forever. There will never be a time after you depart this life if you depart it without Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that it won't be eternal hell. Old Testament bears it out. The rich man died, lifted up his eyes, and tormented in the flames of hell. Please let Lazarus go dip his finger in water and cool my burning tongue because I'm tormented. Is that the Word of God? Okay. Just telling you. You want blessing. You want favor. You want heaven. I'm looking for the eternal stuff. That's why I'm living eternally. Everything I do has an eternal purpose in mind. I'm sending something on ahead. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. People can't rob from you. Moth can't eat it. Rust can't corrode it. Lay up treasure in heaven. Are you doing that? See? Favor. You'll have favor. You'll be blessed. I want you to have favor. I'll give you a prime description of favor. We went out last night for Madeline's birthday. She, we're celebrating her birthday all year. <laughs> she has an extended birthday. And Dave and Debbie took us out last week. Last week, Darwin and Jan, we're just every week. It's just a new, just keep bringing it on. Because I'm the recipient of it. I'll go and eat with her. We had a good time. We got over to the place and they had a waiting line. It was, it was an hour and a half wait. People out the door. 
We're standing, I'm in the line just going up to put my name in. Ready for this? A few minutes, Debbie, Debbie walks over and says, Pastor, get out of the line. A man that's been waiting here for 30 minutes just walked up and gave us his beeper. She no sooner got the words out of her mouth than the beeper went off. And we were there less than five minutes. The man said, when they call you, the name is Gonzalez. I said, we've just become the Gonzalez party. <laughs> Gonzalez party of four. So when the, when, the, when the hostess that was seating us said, good to see you, Gonzalez party, right this way. We followed her right to our seats, and we had ourselves a good time. Favor! <laughs> David looked at me and he said, I can't believe this. We got fun. I said, you know who you're hanging out with? <laughs> Favor. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, it's the timing of the Lord. Sometimes He does that. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all getting this? I'm just telling you. It's what the Lord does. He'll favor you. He'll bless you. Y'all don't think that's... Y'all don't, you may not see that as God, but that, that's, that's God. It's a big deal when, when God does stuff like that for you. We'd have been there an hour and a half waiting. But he knew I was on assignment from the king, and the king's business requires haste. So he said, I'll get you in in five minutes. To the head of the line. Is there scripture for that? The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Ha! Ha! Hallelujah. I felt that one. I just felt that one. Amen. I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it. I didn't go up and say, say to the hostess, I'll, I'll slip you a 20 if you go. You don't have to even slip them a 20. It's the favor of the Lord. I just had a name change to Gonzalez. I said, I know some Gonzalez's. I can handle that. What's that? Welcome to the family. Thank you. The Gonzalez family. Ushers, are y'all ready to ush? Everybody that wants favor. You've been doing good in the favor arena. The blessing arena, you're doing good. Every week the finance office comes to me and says, Thank you, Jesus. The bills are getting paid. Guess what? Guess what? The gospel's going forth. Now, do we want to do more? Yeah, we want to do more, but we got to give more. We just got to be faithful in it. Remember what Brandon preached to us last week? Preparation, dedication, revelation. You got to have those three at work. Amen. He'll help you with it. Praise the Lord. Now, don't get uptight at me. Go, well, he just says that. Don't get uptight at me. Get uptight at the devil in your flesh. Because if you'll obey God, he'll bless you. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, every obedient heart, I declare blessed. I declare favored. It's not about the amount. It's about the purity of our heart. It's about the obedience. Jesus took note of the widow's third of a penny and said she has given more than y'all have given because she's given out of her need, not out of her greed. So, Lord, today, our tithes and offerings are our signa, signa, signified worship. We worship you with the first fruits of our increase, knowing that the 10% and the offering of blessing that you've asked us to give, the other 90 will be prospered. It will, it will come forth in abundance. And I thank you for that today because you are the God not only of provision, but you're the God of abundance. Give us 
the continued divine enablement to trust you in greater measure than ever before, that the kingdom of God may be advanced in this region throughout the earth. Souls may be born into the kingdom. For your honor, for your glory, we worship you in our giving. Let God's church say, praise the Lord. Worship him. I know you can multitask, so while you're giving and multitasking, turn in your Bibles to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Now, when your preacher preaches, I'm instructing you for a purpose. We'll start with verse. 23, verse 23. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering, without wavering, without wavering, Hold fast. The hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. Oh my God. I could stop right there. See, see, see. See, the word, the word ought to excite some of you, but y'all, y'all just sit there passively. You know, it doesn't, the word's not doing anything for you. Okay? It just passes over your little earlobe, and you, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not going to do anything with it. But, but uh, you see, the word says you ought to give the more earnest heed to this. When your preacher starts instructing you, this is the most important instruction you're going to get all week long. Because this is the Word of God, and He says, give the more earnest heed to it, because He that... You need to know that when you speak His Word, He's faithful to it, because He promised you. My question is, if God's promised you some things, have you realized the promise? And if you haven't, why not? Come on! Have you hold... He says, hold fast. Everybody say that. Hold fast. That means you squeeze it so tight... You, there's no intent to let go. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hang on to it. Hold on to your salvation. Why? Because you're closer now than when you first believed. Hold on to the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost because He's guiding you into all truth and giving you power to defeat the enemy on every hand. Hey! I know I stepped into glory when my skin starts crawling around. You ought to know you've stepped into the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. I scared Brandon to death the other other night when I hollered, Hey, I thought he was going to drop his eye teeth. Because he hit hit on a vein when he said, You know... When y'all start doing what the preacher instructs you to do, and the pastor and a few other folks aren't having to do everything here because the body of Christ picks up the slack and and steps up to the plate and says, Pastor, where can I serve? What can I do? I said, Hey! See, we're in a dangerous place right now. Y'all understand that? You're in a dangerous place. Because the Lord's, the Lord's, He put you in this body, and all of a sudden, He shifted on you. He shifted. And while you were sitting here, the church went from a consumer church. Well, let's see, what do I want today? Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, special order won't upset us. All I ask is, God, let me have it my way. Uh uh. Ain't going to happen. It's my way. It's going to be my way. And now you're in a serving church. 
And guess what the Holy Ghost is going to do? Flush every lazy person out. I mean, that means he's going to flush you out of the body. He's going to flush you out to see if you're going to serve or not. He's going to flush you out. Yeah, oh, that's good, Susan. He'll flush you inside out. Some of you are going to feel like you've had spiritual intestines. Or let me explain it to you this way. Some of you are going to feel like you were in preparation for a colonoscopy. Every impurity, every impure thought has to go. Brendan helped me last week painting word pictures. I had, the, at the close of the meal last night, I had flipped up through the menu and I saw a picture. Banana nut bread with a double dip of vanilla ice cream and a sliced banana with caramel all over the top of it. I got to the end, we got to the end of the meal and I said, did y'all see the bananas foster in there with the hot banana nut bread? Dave says, if you want one, get it. Ding, 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 ding. Dave says, I can't eat it because I'm diabetic. They brought us one. We had a few morsels. He says, I can't believe you're eating that in front of me. I said, let me explain it to you. I said, I'll paint a word picture of how good it tastes. And now that I'm preaching this, there's scripture for it, Dave. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, does that make you want to hold fast to the promise? Because why? Because everything God's got for you is good. Everything he has in store for you is good. Hold on to the promise. Don't let it go. My Lord. Is this good? Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And let us, verse 24, consider and give attentive, continuous care to watching over one another. You got to watch over each other. If you're one of these, if you're one of these that come into this body that you don't want nobody in your business, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place. Because we're going to get all up in your beatness. Okay? I learned that from my soul brothers in Bible study. My youth class. We're going to get... Why? Because we are our brother's keeper. We're commanded by the word to watch over each other. Contin- and he said continuously. It didn't say part time. It didn't say when you feel like it. Well, guess what comes along with that continuous care? Accountability. Responsibility. We're responsible to each other. Aren't we? When you get in trouble, we'll help you. When you get in the hospital, we'll come see about you. When you get sick, we'll pray over you. Continuous care to watching over one another. Studying. Studying. See, here's the rub. A lot of people don't want to study. (laughs) My dad used to tell me that. He didn't understand the importance of education because he, he only got to the fourth grade. His dad was a sharecropper, and most of the time he was picking cotton or harvesting sweet potatoes. And so he, he only got to the fourth grade. But after World War II, and we dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, he was in the occupation of Japan when he came back home. He went to school on the GI Bill and got his high school diploma. Well, and in the midst of that, he kept going, oh, man, I'm, I'm having to learn math, and those fractions just hurt my head. Learning those fractions. 
He never knew why he'd need fractions because when before he, God called him into the ministry, he became a finished carpenter and he needed to learn how to ru- read a rule. Because all those things were going to be needful. He needed to know fractions. He needed to know numbers. He needed to know how to subtract. He said, studying. You've got to study the Word of God. You've got to study the principles of truth. You've got to study and know the promises of God. We've got too many believers sitting on on our pews, especially in Pentecostal circles, that we think, well, I'll just speak in tongues and let the Holy Ghost... The Holy Ghost is supposed to help you smarten up. The Holy Ghost is supposed to guide you into truth. When you've got Baptist and Presbyterian brothers that know more of the Word of God than you do as a Pentecostal, you better start digging in the Word and wise up. Studying. I'm telling you, the Presbyterians hit it. Hot and heavy. They're into the Word. They may not be speaking in tongues, but they know who their rightful place is in Christ. And so do the Baptists. There's even a lot of Catholics no more. But the, Ellen was waiting for me. I looked over at her and said, she was waiting. I knew I'd get a response. You know why? Because they get the catechism. They get doctrine. This is about doctrine. Studying. How you may stir up. Why are we going to meet here tonight to stir something up? Why do we just want to sit here till we die and become extinct? God's called us to reach the kingdom. Now, when you do that, there's a risk involved. When you start stirring people up. But the Lord did something to your preacher in this revival. He renewed my holy boldness. You know why? Because I'm responsible to instruct you. And if I don't instruct you, and you go on in your ignorance, and you get destroyed for lack of knowledge, then the Lord may hold me accountable. For it. So I'm instructing you to stay. I'm instructing you to stir one another up. Stimulate growth. He goes on, and he says, there's a specific kind. He says, stir up how you may stimulate and in sight. I want to get you so stirred up and blessed, God. I'll, I'm going to do this thing. You may even start out with the wrong attitude, but God will get you in here. If He can keep you in here long enough, He'll change your attitude and get you with the right kind of attitude. He said what He would prefer is to stimulate and incite to love and helpful deeds and noble activities. We're going to do good stuff to people. Wherever we find a need, we're going to help out. Now, verse 25. He says, not forsaking. Now, why would he throw this in? right in the middle of all this good stuff, stirring everybody up, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers. I'm I'm stopping to let that sink in because I want to make a real bold statement. If God expects me to be here every Sunday, does He expect you to be here? Does He? So the next time... Oh, help me, Jesus. Let me, let me, let me, let me come in, it, in at it from the side instead of right on up on it. The next time that I'm assuming, I'm going to assume something. That's a dangerous place to be. But I'm assuming that when you miss church, that the Lord gave you permission to be. 
And so when he tells you that you can go to the beach, call me up and take me with you. On Sunday. Or when family comes in and says, well, we had family come in, so we had to go. Are you getting that? Now, as a kid, I never felt deprived because we always went to the beach or the lake on Saturday. I never felt deprived. I got to do all of that I wanted to do because I did it on Sunday. Because it was never a question in my house when I was growing up where I was going to be on Sunday. Am I reading this correct? Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers. Am I talking to the right group? Maybe I'm in a group of non-believers. Is this group of believers? He says, then if you are a believer, you're supposed to get together. And the reason he was saying that is because people were falling into a lethargic spiritual state. They were getting weak in their faith. We're supposed to get together and encourage each other to mature and grow up in Christ and be able to overcome the devil when we go out of these four walls. Is that correct? He says, get together, assembly as the hab- as is the habit of some people. Look over at your neighbor and say, are you some people? Are you some of those? He says, if you're not some of those people... Help me, Lord. Help me. Because here's the risk I run as your preacher. When I start preaching like this, in condemnation or conviction, let me say, not condemnation, because there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ. To those that are... I'm not saying what I'm saying to convict or condemn. I'm saying this to exhort and to tell you what God requires for you to be an overcomer. Now, I'm guessing, this is just a guess, but I'm guessing by your not being here that you can make it on your own. that you don't need us because he's saying here, we've got to get together. What do we do? Encourage, build up, bear one another's burdens, look out for the needs of each other. He says, admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging. Some of you need warning. I'm here to warn some of you. You're in a dangerous place. You're at ease in Zion. Nothing nothing in the Spirit affects you anymore. And, and you may not wake up until something happens to one. Of, if something happens to one of your children, what are, what are you going to do? And it's going on right under your nose, and you go, "How did that happen?" Warning. Warning. You know anything about your kids? Do you speak to them heart to heart, or do they just reside in your home and you know absolutely? You don't know anything about their heart. You don't know their fears. You don't know their frustrations. You don't know their hurts. Oh, you want me to drill down deeper? If you hurt your child and you knew it and the Holy Spirit instructed you in order to bring healing, you need to go apologize to them. Would you do it? 
Some people can't bring themselves to apologize it to them. Hello? Are y'all you hearing me? Urging, admonishing. Why? Because God wants to heal you. You can, until you get beyond that and you get healing in your family and get healing in your spirit and get healing in your household, there's always going to be strife and struggle and conflict. You know why? Because the devil's going to eat your lunch. He's going to eat your lunch. You're going because you're consumed with this stuff. And God's saying, trying to heal you, trying to warn you. I'm urging you. I know I'm talking to the right group this morning. And I'm urging. I'm warning. Some of it, listen. Let's get off the merry-go-round of blaming everybody. Okay? You can blame your parents to the cows come home about the way you was raised. Jesus, let me say it. You ready? Jesus died to heal all of that. His finished work paid the penalty. Whatever your mom and daddy did to you, whatever an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent did to you, they molested you, they abused you, they did something to you, they acted in a way to you that just tore your world up, just messed your mind up, and you've been living in fear, you've been living in guilt, you've been living in condemnation for the rest of your life. Jesus paid for all of that in full. Oh! Oh, oh, I'm admonishing you. I'm admonishing you. I'm admonishing you. This will sound a little humorous, but it'll make the point. Dave kept reminding me last night, I can't believe you ate that Bananas Foster in front of me. I can't believe you ate that Bananas Foster in front of me. It was so good. You you see, some of y'all are looking at, at freedom and you're going, I can't believe they can be free. Why can't I? I can't believe they can't be free. You know what I wound up saying to Dave? I said it in a humorous way. We both laughed at it. I walked up to him. I put my arm around him. I said, Let it go. Do you hear me in the Spirit? Do you hear me in the Spirit? Listen, when you let go of something, Brandon taught us this last week, it was so good. When you let go of something, here's I got a theology adjustment last week because I'm a lifelong student of the Word. Okay? You want to know what my theology adjustment was? We were praying and said, we're going to recover some things. I thought, oh, that's a great thing. Yeah, we're going to recover. And Brandon gets up and adjusts my theology and says, God doesn't want you to recover it. He wants to replace it with something better. Theology adjusted. Just popped it right in place. It's like, a, it's like having your shoulder blade out of place and you just get it popped back in. Oh, that felt good. He wants to replace it, doesn't he? Why wouldn't you let him replace the hurt and the guilt and the condemnation? Why does Romans 8, 1 say that? There is therefore now. Now. Everybody say now. When is now? Right now. No condemnation. No condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. What's the point? Step out of you. Step out of the old man. It's not about you. It's not about what somebody did to you. Step into Christ. Let Him step into you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Behold, behold, behold. Oh, that means look at it. Behold it. What am I beholding? The new me. I'm new. The new me. The new you. Lord said, come back here and say hey to the new man. 
Hey, man. Yeah. yeah. This guy right here, best roofer in Polk County. Maybe the best roofer anywhere. I've seen his work. He's meticulous with it. I've seen his work. Anybody that's got that kind of discipline, that kind of worth it. Listen, my dad's a finished carpenter. You know this. You can track with him. My dad's a finished carpenter. He, he puts a magnifying glass to it. He knows when it's done right. He knows when it's done wrong. Why am I telling you this story? He needed a new roof on his home. You know who I recommended? This man. I was just over visiting dad last week. He said, you know that Carl? He said, that guy. He said, we never had a roof done like that before. This is good. This is good. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because if he can do roofing that good, he can do Jesus even better. Don't you think? I'm not asking you to do something that hadn't already been paid for. I'm not asking you to do something you can't do. This has already been paid for. Jesus paid for it with his blood. Let me tell you, y'all want a little tidbit? You want a nugget? This is a gold nugget. This is a gold nugget. Brandon and I were sitting at Chili's last night talking about the Holy Spirit. He says... I brought up the Ark of the Covenant for those of you Bible scholars that love that Old Testament. I love Old Testament because Jesus is in all of it. He said, he said, the Jewish rabbis think they know where the Ark of the Covenant is. He said, that's why They want to be able to lord it over Israel and take back because they believe they know where the ark is. They can get the ark back in their possession with the favor of the Lord. And we don't have to, they ain't read all the New Testament. See, the Quran tells them that. The Quran tells them that. But the Bible tells them if you listen to what happened to the Philistines when they took the ark, they begged David to take it back after they went through hell on earth. Y'all with me? They think the ark is, un- they think, they, they believe that the ark is under, in the catacombs and the caves of the Israelites. If that's true, there are, there are theologians who believe My God, I hope it's true because it makes my skin crawl. That when the blood and water came out of his side, that it spilled down on the mercy seat. Oh, if that's true. And there are those who believe it. Blood, blood on the mercy seat sets you and me free. Sets you and me free. I'll go research that and see if you can find that out. I just, you know, when I get a tidbit, I just, I'm God's news behind the news. Already? Get that? mercy seat. Did you know that your heart is a mercy seat? And that when he sprinkles his blood, the devil can't stay there anymore. His blood. His blood makes the vilest sinner clean. His blood. Why am I preaching like this this morning? The end, we're to admonish, warn, 
urge and encourage each other. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. Look over at your neighbor and say, be faithful. Don't give in. Don't give in. Don't give up. You better start. If you hadn't already started, you better prepare, prepare for the day of the Lord. He's coming. You better be dedicated. You better be continually seeing revelation of the Spirit. See, we got revelation here this morning. Revelation. But you've got to be dedicated. And you've got to be faithful because the day of the Lord, His soon return. You get in here with your wedding garment on. Did you hear me? You get in here with your wedding garment on. Why do you need to have your wedding garment on? Because you may have some spots in it. You need Holy Ghost spot remover to get some of those imperfections out of you. You may have some wrinkles in it. And you may need the you may need the warmth of the Holy Ghost to come by there and just turn up the heat of the Holy Ghost in your life. Y'all hearing me? He's coming like a thief in the night. He's coming quickly. He's coming for those that are looking for him. Why are we here this morning? Because I'm looking for him. I'm expecting him. I'm not just looking for him. I'm living like I'm looking for him. I'm living it. Did y'all hear what Brandon taught you last week? Here's, here's how you know you're living it. This is your life. I'm okay with lifestyle, but I, I, I want to get beyond lifestyle. Because lifestyle kind of, it's kind of wishy-washy. It means I can kind of take it or leave it. It's a lifestyle. No, this is my life. Jesus is my life. Serving Him is my life. It's who I am. My life is now hidden with Christ in God. What does that mean? There's nothing that you or anybody else can do to offend me because I'm not losing my reward for you. I will not lose my reward for you. Say what you will about me. Believe what you will about me. Do what you want to do to me. But you're not going to stop me from my reward. I'm not going to take the bait. Ah, I've done been through the bait of Satan. I'm not taking the bait. I'm not buying into his scandalous lies. I'm not getting... See, some of you need to get into the bait of Satan because every time somebody goes, boo, you're offended. And it's impossible to live this life without offense coming. You're going to be offended. Somebody's going to offend you unless you get to the place of maturity in Christ and you can get there where perfect love casts out fear. See, when you're perfected in love, there's no need to fear what anybody can do to you because you hold fast to your faith in Christ. Hold on to it. This passage of Scripture, there's a Greek word in there. It's called derelictos. It's where we get our word derelict. You know what the word derelict, everybody understand the word derelict? Misfit. Immature. Everybody, can you relate to that word? Derelict. He's saying, don't become a spiritual derelict. Get firmly rooted and grounded in Christ and grow up in Him. Grow up. It's time to grow up. See, if you're going to follow the instruction of your preacher, don't forsake. Don't neglect. Don't put off. Don't put it off. 
Get together. Encourage each other. Build each other up in the faith. And this, I'm going to give you the opposite. This isn't building each other up in the faith. Well, the music was too loud today. They never sing any of the songs I wanted to sing. I'm, are you feeling built up? They never sing any of those old songs, the really good ones. Listen, when Rita shows up, I like to go back and sing Awesome in This Place and Hail Jesus, You're My King, and all of them, Because He Lives. And Oh, we had a girl, every time the choir, when, the, when we had the choir singing, she sat right over here, every time the choir sang One Less Stone, we'd get to the second verse, She'd start in like that, just spinning, screaming. I said, girl, why do you do that? That's the song I remember when I got saved. I just want to praise Him. I said, great, go for it. But every time the choir sang one less stone, you could figure it was going to happen. Helicopter lady. She had the helicopter spin. I had an aunt that used to do that. She had helicopter. I said, I said Ain't Elva, one day you're going to fly right on into heaven. Just helicoptering all over the place. We did some crazy things in our infancy as Pentecostal. And you know what? I'm not knocking the craziness. Okay? Because sometimes we just need to give the Lord crazy praise. Stuff that don't make no sense to the flesh. And it just discombobulates the devil. Not because we want to see how idiotic we can be, but just so how outlandish and extravagant we can be with our praise. And that's okay. I understand that. But we need to be faithful in what we do. We need to be dedicated. We need to be developing ourselves. This is good word. This is good word. How many believe Jesus is coming soon? How many intend to go when he comes? Okay, a few of you don't. Those are the ones. Y'all think when I ask for a show of hands that I'm asking a trick question. It was not a trick question. Jesus is about to show up. He's about to catch his church out of here. And I don't know about you guys, I'm going in the first load. I'm going in the first load. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you wait around here to the second load, it's going to cost you your life. You will be a martyr, literally, if you make it to heaven. I'm telling you what Revelation teaches. You'll be a martyr. You'll have to lay down your physical life in order to make it. So why not go the grace route? Grace is so much better. Mercy is so much better. That's good, Ellen. Did you hear Ellen? Did you come out of Presbyterian? Some of Presbyterian? And now you're a Presbycostal. There you go. Oh, God. No, but did you hear Ellen? Thank you for helping me preach. It's already paid for. It's already paid for. And some of us think it's too easy because it's already paid for. Uh-uh. It cost Jesus his blood. It cost him everything. That's why when he looked in that cup and said, Father, if you can let this cup pass for me. You know what he was looking at? The sin. Let this cup of sin. That's why from the cross, Matthew 26, when he cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was saying to the Father, Father, this is your son talking. Do you think I'm a derelict? Have you disowned me? His father had to turn his back on the sin because he had taken on the sin of us all. 
Oh, God, do you understand the high price? That's why we got to be faithful. The day's approaching. The day's approaching. The day of the Lord's approaching. And you've got to tell somebody else, get ready. Don't be a slacker. Don't be a derelict. Don't goof off. This is the time to press in. This is the time to be dedicated. This is the time to be faithful. This is the time to admonish each other. This is the time to encourage each other. What does that mean? Pick up the phone this week and call four or five people and say, I'll see you in church Sunday. Do I need to come by and pick you up? That's why this man runs a bus three times a week. Do I need to come pick you up? We'll get you here. You got it? Anybody here want to say yes to Jesus this morning? You've been a, I'm talking to people. You've been away from Him. Or you've been, you've been like these people I'm describing here. You're a believer. God loves you, but you've not been as faithful as you need to be. You've not been as committed. Come on, let's get real. Do what Devin did. I'm sorry I wasn't in my post as a greeter this morning. Come on, stand up. I mean, just say, I, this is me. I, I, need to, I, I need to get faithful to this thing. I don't need, I'm not going to be one of these casual, hit or miss Christians anymore. I need to get faithful to this thing. The day of the Lord's approaching. All right, I'm going to take you one step further. And I'm, I'm going to end with this. Why is this important, adults? Because your babies are watching you. Your babies are watching you. And what does Scripture say? Be an example. Be an example. It didn't say be a derelict. It didn't say be a slacker. It didn't say live any old loosey-goosey way you want to live. Why do you want them to be good people and you're living like hell? You want them to stay out of jail, but, you know, you want them to live a good life, but you don't want to step up. Come on! Am I talking... I'm admonishing now. I'm not trying to talk you into something. I'm telling you the truth of what God's Word says. If you want them to turn out right, then you live right so they have something to follow. Your baby's destiny depends on it as much as yours does. I'm not trying to talk you into something. I'm giving you the truth of what God says. If you do it, you'll live forever. If you don't, you'll die in your sin. It's as plain as I can get it. After today, don't stand in the judgment and come to me and say, Preacher, you didn't tell me. After today, it's over. I told you. You know the truth. Now, you can step into freedom or you can go on in bondage. Because sin's bondage. It is. So if you want freedom, and you'd, you'd, you've heard the word this morning, you, need to, you want to tune it up. Stand up on your feet. You want Jesus. You're going to turn your back on, on your flesh. You're going to turn your back on irresponsibility. Turning my back on this stuff. It's time to get dedicated. It's time to start preparing my life. It's time to be an example for my kids to follow. I'm telling you, I feel God in this place. You want to say something? Come here, little orange girl. I just want to say that sometimes we come to church and we want to sit in the back and say that we were there and we heard the message. And, um, I know my son's sitting in the back today, but for the last two weeks at Sunrise Christian, they've had uh, like a revival of Dr. Jack up here. My son sat in the row every day. Every day he sat in the front row. Most of the other kids wanted to sit in the back. I came with him a few times because he begged me, Mom, please. So I did. Well, the last day he was here, Dr. Jack pulled out a few 20s out of his wallet and said, you know, all week long I've watched these boys sit in the front row and I've seen y'all sit in the back, first one to the front and listens to me today and gets this 20 bucks. Those kids were trampling over each other trying to get in the front row. And he said, you know, it's really sad that sometimes it takes money and a full scholarship to college. So, I just want to 
say, sit in the front row. So don't take my seat, <laughs> but just come to the front because we're overwhelmed. All the kids just sat in the row, and he was just begged us every day. Please come. And he's very excited. He is going to River Bible College when he graduates next year. Mm. How good. Thank God he's not going to be a fry cook. He's left the fry cook behind. You're standing. All these people are standing. All of you are standing. Hallelujah. 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 This is good. God is good. God is faithful. John, give me two minutes. I have the gift of stop. I need to be true to my word to build faith in some of those who heard those words have come and admonished me and said, Jay, you still need to stop in three times. I am convinced and sure of this very thing. Would you read that with me? Would you read that with me? Begin. I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. In you. In you. In you. you. I could have prayed a prayer over you, but the Holy Spirit said, release the word in you. Right up to the day of His return. You can't get any closer than that. He is perfecting you and He will complete the work in you. Amen? Give us our Psalms Scripture. How many believe that? Now I want you to confess that to somebody around you. He's completing the work and perfecting it in you. He's completing the work and perfecting it in you. He's completing. He's. Remember I said He, not you. You comes at the end. Let's do one one thing right here. Tomorrow, right? Okay. The good work. The good work. The good work. The Father will be glorified. Would y'all agree with me? Would we agree together? Neurosurgery tomorrow. Okay? Peggy, would you become the second? Two or more of you agree? Okay, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Would you give me a hand of faith this way? Thank you, Father. Would you just thank Him in advance? See, we're believers. We, we, he said he already knows what we need before we ask. But thank him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for restoring. Thank you for adjusting my theology again, Holy Spirit. Thank you for replacing it. I say replace with that which is better. Replace with that which is better. However you do it, it'll be done. It'll be guided. It'll be directed and led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, Father, 
would you give us would you give us a deep a deeper seated peace would you grant us a deeper ability to trust you more teach us to rest in you hallelujah we rest in you we rest in you we've told you every detail and you said be anxious for nothing Jesus name everything that you have need of is supplied everything when I say everything I don't need to rehearse it and say you know the doctors and guide the hands of the, all that everything you need supplied. oh oh I'm just gonna do this I'm just gonna say blessed and favored okay so your beeper's going to go off in five minutes, too. He'll just get you right on in so everything goes smooth. And, and let's say, uh, Lord, be glorified so that you're now a witness and a testimony of the goodness of God to those even in the medical profession. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch your hand this way. Thank God for his hand upon you. The good news is that God spared you. God has protected you. If the devil could have taken you out, he would have already taken you out. So we know his assignment is to kill, steal, and destroy. But we declare the provision of the Lord. We declare the favor of the Lord. We declare the provision and blessing of the Lord from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet never be the same again step into the new life step into becoming the new man that God has created and destined you to be I declare it today no weapon that the enemies formed against you to try to destroy you to slay you to destroy your family prosper and I'm telling you today, what you've heard in this assembly of believers, it has started a new work. God has begun a new thing. And it's in you. It's in you. He's in you. He's in. <laughs> ah, he's in you. And all this stuff that's been coming against you, I decree and declare by the authority of the word of the living God that you, don't, you will never need an external stimuli to mask the pain and the fear that you feel. What's going on inside of you right now is being released by the Holy Spirit. It's been released by the Holy Spirit. Mm. I declare the peace of God on you. I declare the favor of the Lord on you. I declare the blessing of the Lord upon you. Mm. You're, you're too good a guy. You're too great a man. God's got great things in store for you. You with me? I'm with you. He's in our corner. He's with us. Matter of fact, not only is he with us, he's in us. So everything, Jesus, you paid it all in full. It's all gone. We take authority over anything. Past, present, we lay it at the feet of Jesus. We declare the fullness of all that you have.
Any other believers believe that? Give voice to the word of the Lord. Give voice to the word of the Lord. Resurrection. Say that with me. Resurrection life. Resurrection life. I tell you, when you get resurrected, that's new stuff. That's new stuff. He takes out the old and puts in the new. Okay? The old stony heart goes, puts in the heart of flesh. Hallelujah. Why not? Let's let's thank him for that. That here's a, here's a woman of faith. This is a woman of faith. Uh huh. She's leaving a legacy for her, for you, and for her grandchildren to follow. Yeah. Look where God's brought her from. Oh, hallelujah! See, I I I was in here teaching Bible the night that Mitch came in and said she was dead. And and we went to the hospital and she, she wasn't dead, but she was in a coma, and the doctor said she probably won't make it through the night. That's the word the doctor told us. We were back there with your granddaughter. Okay? And, and the doctor said, she won't make it through the night. We just laid hands on her and prayed for her. And then she calls me, gets me out of bed at 7 o'clock in the morning, and says, Pastor, you won't believe it. I'm in here in the room with Mama in intensive care, and she's sitting up here eating toast and eggs and grits <laughs> for breakfast. Didn't you tell me that? So she's eating breakfast. I said, my God, she was comatose last night. See what God can do? Come on, let's believe Him, saints. Let's believe Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my firm, impenetrable rock and my Redeemer, I love you. See you tonight.